Hey everybody, what's up? I'm Justin from MLB Baseball Blogs. I'm here with Tim. Guys, we haven't made an update video in such a long time, but before we get to that, let's bring in Tim. Tim, what's going on, man? Welcome back. I'm happy, man. Happy to be back. Happy to be helping you out. I'll be here all summer, bro. Absolutely. So, Tim, Phillies news. Fill us in. We have Utley coming back yesterday against the Reds. The, the Phillies also got Scott Pensednik. Tell me how well Utley did and what could we expect from him in the future. Utley went 0 for 5 yesterday, but I think the presence of him in the lineup uh, made everyone else on the team feel like we're a better lineup with them. It made the other pitcher who was brought to the Royal last night feel a little more scared. So for a while, even if he doesn't play well, um, he's still an, a big name in that lineup that a pitcher does not want to see come to the plate. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know about Ugly. I, I just, I, I don't think, he looks fine last night, really, but I, I just, I, I don't see it right now. I think he's still hurt. Yeah. Um, make him back to that reference with Bronson Arroyo. Bronson Arroyo said he um, felt some back problems. He flew back to Cincinnati, get tests. He had x-rays done. The x-rays turned out negative. He's not expected to miss any of his starts. So, Bronson Arroyo is totally fine. So, Tim... The Blue Jays released Scott Pudsednik about a couple days ago. The Phillies decided to pick him up. Will Pudsednik make it to the majors with the Phillies? And if he does, how much death will he bring to the Phillies outfield? He brings a lot of death if he makes it. Now, the guys currently in the Phillies outfield are John Mayberry Jr., who's doing a tremendous job. Raul Abanez, who's doing awful, but they're kind of stuck with this deal for the remainder of the season. Uh, Dominic Brown, who's their top prospect, and you would think he's going to be up there for good if he starts playing well. Uh, there's uh, Michael Martinez, I believe, is still up there, unless they sent him down. They're going to end up having a lot of depth in outfield if they bring Sednik up. I mean, the only way I could see them doing that is if Ben Francisco got sent down, and that's not going to happen. I don't see John Mayberry getting sent down unless they decided, which I don't expect, to designate Raul Bonnet for assignment, I, I don't see him making the major league team unless uh, John Mayberry plays really awful or they decide to send Don Brown back, which just would not be a smart move. If he's up there, though, he's a fast guy. He can lay down a lot of bonds. I like Scott Stenick, but he's not going to change your whole team. Yeah. He is a former stolen base leader in baseball. I mean, he's a speedy outfielder. I think that if I have to agree with you on everything, so... Um, Tim, is there any other Phillies news that you'd like to get to? No, no, no. Alright, so let's move our way down to the NL Central. If you guys touched base with the Reds game like two games ago, Edison Volquez was on the mound and only pitching two innings against the Cleveland Indians. Volquez was taken out of the game by Dusty Baker and Volquez had this to say. Um, Volquez was actually sent down after this comment. I think everybody has to step up and start getting some runs. Volquez said, the last five, the last five games we've scored how many runs? 13, actually 12 in five games. It's not the way we played, we were playing last year. We're better than that. Uh, right after this comment, Edison Volquez was sent down to the team's AAA, the Louisville Bats. So, Tim, what do you think about uh, Edison Volquez so far this season? Well, I gotta pull up his stats because I'm not exactly sure what he's been doing. What I know, though, is that Edison Volquez missed like a majority of last season uh, with some health problems, with a lot. And I mean, I, I just think that it's silly for him to be making this comment at this point. I think that we all know that uh, Edison Volquez has has the talent to be great, but I mean, when you're you got traded for Josh Hamilton. You're the main piece. You have to be great. Yeah, this year he's three and two with a 6.35 ERA in 10 games. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And you can complain all you want about the offense. The bottom line is he missed the most of last season when the Reds had the best offense in baseball. Because they didn't do well for a couple of games, that means that they suck. I mean, I, I, I just don't get that. Yeah. Uh, talking about the void, talking about who could fit in 
to fill in Edison's void. Mike Leak got sent down. Chad Rensky could be a possibility. And also Dontrell Willis. You can also, also bring in Matt Maloney. Out of these four guys, Tim, who do you think is the favorite to fill in the spot for Edison Volquez? I think you got to look at Mike Leak. He was up there last year, and uh, he was kind of that guy at the beginning of the year prior to getting arrested for shoplifting, which is such a joke. But, I mean... He was the guy they said at the beginning that was probably going to be the odd man out, but he'd end up in the bullpen. So hopefully he's got his stuff back together now because I would expect to see him up at the major league level. Uh, I think with Volquez, though, he's not done there, but he's going to get one more shot. If he doesn't do it, he's kind of going to go down as the type of guy where you say, wow, he had one good season, it looked like we got a great trade, and then he never was able to live up to it again. I think that... For Volca, I think Mike Leak is a piece for the future there, and even if he's not in the rotation the rest of the season, he's going to be, and I, I think he's their first option. Yeah. If you guys want to read more about this story, you can check out my the blog on my website at mlbfranchiseinsider.wordpress.com, or you can check out all the blogs on, M on MLB. So... Guys, let's make our way into the same division. The Texas Rangers have announced that they've, they're have they looking for either a closer for 2012 or a setup man for right now. Joel Hanoran, the Texas Rangers have contacted the Pirates on a possible trade that will send Joel Hanoran to the Rangers. Tim, with the trade deadline coming up a little bit later in the season, could you see this trade possibly going down? I can see it possibly going down. I mean, the Pirates are the type of team that they sign these low-risk guys, and if they have a good season, they almost are forced to move them so they can get talent for the future. I mean, he is certainly an option, but I, I don't know. I mean, prior to this season, let's look at what he did last year. Saves-wise, last year he had six saves. I mean, not, nothing special through 62 ERA. He hasn't been a shutdown closer till this season. And, I mean, there, there's a couple names that come out up. Uh, if the A's were to fall out of it, Brian Fuentes could come up in a, as an option. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what he's doing this season, but he could certainly be an option. Uh, Joe Nathan is another interesting name. If you would, you would have to take on that contract, which is quite a risk considering he has not been good this season, and I'm not even sure if he's pitching right now. I believe he is. But when he's on, he's on, and I think it, by next season, he's a long-term option. I mean, he's 36 years old, but closers can go until they're 40 or 41. Long-term for a closer is like four years. So he's an option, and then the guy who's there with him, who's also not having a great season, is Matt Caps. I mean, last season he came out of nowhere. Not out of nowhere, but he... He was just a mediocre closer last year. He had 42 saves. This year, though, he's 7 for 10 in saves with a 506 ERA. So the, the Twins will make a decision prior to that deadline, and they'll probably move one of those guys. My guess is that it, it would be Caps, but I don't know. Yeah, but if this trade was to go down, if Hanoran was to go to the Rangers, do you think the Rangers would send maybe one of their top prospects for this guy? For Hanrahan? Yeah. I think that's a... Uh, if you've got, like, five top prospects, I think that's the type of thing where you send your fourth best prospect type thing. Yeah. So, will Hanrahan go to the Texas Rangers? We don't know. I heard the Rangers are considering putting Felice in the, in the rotation in 2012. That means the closer spot is open. Arthur Rhodes, Darren Oliver, those guys are just... They're out of their prime. They're gone, so... They're, they're too old to be in that situation. I, mean, I don't know. I, I don't see either of them as an option. I like Fleas as an option, but I think that, that eventually they're going to give him a shot in the rotation, which if he does well as a closer, which he certainly did last season, he's missed a lot of time this season, I think it's a mistake. And we saw that with Java Chamberlain. He was a beast in the bullpen. They tried, I mean, they, the Yankees really messed up with him in the rotation. They had no idea what they were doing, and it, it just didn't work out. Now you try and move him back to the bullpen, and he can't even get it done there. So you got to be careful what you do with uh, Natalia Felice. But if you're going to move him to the rotation, you're going to have to get someone from out of the organization to be your next closer. Yeah. So, guys, to end this on a high note, we have the final subject for today. 
Earlier today, the Boston Red Sox announced that they have sent Hideki Okajima on an assignment. Um, this has been going down ever since the Boston Red Sox acquired Franklin Morales from the Colorado Rockies. Tim, with Hideki Okajima not in the Boston bullpen, how will this affect the Red Sox in their bullpen? Well, I mean, I guess if you base it off the 2009 to 2000 or uh, 2010 and 2011, it's probably not very much. I mean, it's nice to have a ton of lefties, but he just hasn't gotten it done. Last year, in 56 games, he had a 450 ERA. And this offseason, they added a ton of depth. They've already got the Dan Wheeler, Bobby Jenks, a lot of guys. Not to mention, you add that on the already heavy bullpen with um, Jonathan Papelbon and Daniel Bard. I mean, he just became expendable and the type of guy they just don't need there anymore, even if he is a lefty, because this year he has a 4.32 ERA. I, I think he's done at this point. I don't think he has anything left in the tank. So I don't think it will affect them too much. Be on the lookout for them to add a lefty at the deadline. Yeah, I wrote a blog on this earlier today, and I could possibly f see... Hideki Okajima possibly going to the Rangers. I mean, if Feliz is moved into the pitching rotation, Joel Hanneran is acquired by Texas, the the setup role is pretty much open for. I mean, Darren Oliver, he's what the hell, what the hell he is. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, he's more, uh, Hideki Okajima is more of a situational lefty, as most lefties are, so I, I, I don't know, I just don't see that. So, yeah, so there you go, guys. What do you think about where will Hideki Okajima? Will he become a Red Sox? Will he still be a Red Sox? Will he be a Ranger? We don't know. So, guys, let's end this on a high note. That's Tim. I'm Justin. We'll talk to you guys later.